All right, so today let's continue with the PDF parser project. So if you remember from last time, we were able to implement uh, just the, let's say, outer layer of the parser. So it gives us back all the objects that are, that are in the PDF file. So if we check out uh, the PDF file that we use, so sample PDF, it finds each object like this but we don't uh, parse yet what's in the inside of the object so the important part pretty much so let's try to do that thing today so if we go into the main.c file right we have this uh, parse pdf function so if we go into that one we have um, like a while loop where we skip all the comments and then we check if it's an object so if we have an object we have to parse the indirect object that's how I guess if I go like this um, yeah so indirect objects look like this thing so they start with two numbers and the keyword obj and then inside of them they have normal objects from PDF files. So we parse that kind of object and yeah, inside of this thing, uh, as I said here, we must have the two numbers and the obj keyword and then we expect to have more direct, uh, one or more direct objects. So yeah, I mean, if we find the end obj keyword, it means that we found the end of that definition and otherwise we have to check for each individual case so i guess the easiest one is i mean these are all easy because they start with uh, different things so for example dictionaries or mappings start with two less than symbols streams start with stream and so on so um yeah, let's let's try to parse this kind of things. So what I guess what we can do um is to hmm. Yeah, why not just try to parse all of these data structures themselves right and uh, you know build this this object -y thingy so um i guess let's start with i guess the dictionary is the first one so let's start with that I also have the object KV. So let's try to start with the dictionary. Right, so if if the string slice starts with two less than symbols, then we might want something like parse dictionary object in here parse dictionary object and this function should take in the slice so this string slice slice um, I mean I'm stupid it should be just slice like that and probably like object d but mm, i feel like we just want this thing so uh i guess the other way of doing it is defined here object d object am i right 
uh, but let's not call it object because object is that so um, let's maybe say direct object or child or like nested object or maybe just obj or something so obj is pretty much this one and also this one so it's all the children of this parent object so yeah i mean let's call it obj why not and what i can do here is maybe pass it as a reference so we initialize that object and i mean to me it looks like it should work to have it here um, allocated on the stack and then copied into an array like how i implemented my data structures i guess will make sense so we have it like this we pass it here and this function is gonna be responsible you know to set the object kind to dictionary and then fill up this dynamic array from the union so that's how i imagine it so let's remove the comment so yeah we are gonna parse the dictionary object then in case it's the end we break out of this loop so at the end here is gonna be interesting we can just go ahead and add this object into the where is it into this dynamic array objects arrow object so ds dynamic array append then we have to use object objects and here we pass obj like that so yeah this one should probably yeah i guess add the object into the list which makes sense to me you know maybe also have status codes but that's uh, another story So yeah, now let's try to implement this parse dictionary object. So parse parse dictionary object is gonna take in a string slice slice and um, object D object why not? Let's have uh, I guess in the result equals zero and then let's have the just in case we need this um, thing and then let's set the kind to object dictionary and then we can dynamic let's initialize the object dictionary and of course we need the uh, object kv here okay and another obvious one is that needs to be a reference but that's uh, whatever so yeah we we initialize the dictionary all right so now it's a bit interesting because not sure if you can have I mean, if you look at this one, you can see it's a new line there, so it's bunch. It can be new. I want to say it can be white spaces inside of the dictionary. So, yeah, and even nested dictionaries. That's uh, a bit. That could be tricky. but uh, yeah from from what i know um, dictionaries are gonna be something like a name and then you need to have some sort of value but I'm not sure why these are like three zero r like 
they don't really look that familiar what these numbers could mean because if we check on like we keep pdf here I was looking at like boolean values real numbers integers strings names arrays dictionaries so and not entirely sure what those numbers are exactly like they could be just numbers but they look pretty strange so like here length is this thing and then filter is flat decode so my idea is that a dictionary is gonna be a name that starts with a slash and then another object so yeah like that could be hmm. and i guess because of that we are also going to need a parse direct object function so let's try to have that parse direct object which should take the same uh, arguments as this one so might have the same signature and like beginning and i'd say that that function is going to take all of this stuff probably or i guess you know it's kind of similar and then here on the else case we might just do something like this could be parse direct object then we pass the slice and the well and the pointer to obj so it's like if we find end object then we just stop and if we find something else it means it's an object or i guess a direct object so we parse it and that's that and let me just define it also at the beginning so we have it like for all other options okay doesn't need any of that um string slice tokenize do i I mean, looks like I care about the token, so yeah. Uh, but I mean, this is just for the demo right now, just for debugging. In the end, we'll uh, implement it properly, but for now, it's just so it works. Okay, so parse direct object is gonna be called here right in uh, in the body of a uh, indirect object or whatever it's called and then if we find two arrows like that two less than signs we have to parse a dictionary object and the yeah, dictionary object we might want to do something let's try to use the string slice string slice trim left so trim left what it's gonna do let's check 
I guess while we have this character, it removes it. Um, and why not? Kind of makes sense, but it's a bit a bit weird to do, honestly. But I guess it should work, to be fair. It's just that uh, only the image.pdf file, if we take a look at it, I find it a bit weird. It's like type is X object, subtype is this. So it's, yeah, we, we cannot really split by what like white spaces. We have to, I don't know. But see, like, again, like, what does 80R mean though? It's more like a reference looks like to me. So it's 30R might mean this thing. So maybe these are references. Or at least that's how I see it. 50R could be that these are references. Hmm. And who knows? Right. So yeah, I'd say we want to trim left. all of these then I'd like a function that removes white spaces so let's do trim left WS like white spaces maybe something like this and the function is going to be a bit simpler i'd say um let's just copy everything so trim the left side of the string slice by white spaces So, I'm pretty sure there is a function for is space in C. Uh, but I'm not sure which there were C type, right? Oh shit. Uh, let me check where do I have to import that thing though. Well, if I search for include, I guess here include c type dot h. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. 
is space. Really, no information? Strange. I guess it's because um, um, yeah, I don't define those uh, clank flags or whatever. So let's try white spaces. So like a small trick is to use compile flags the txt for clang and then if you define stuff you put them here I guess it's minus d so now if we go to main I mean, it's going to complain about this stuff, but at least now we should have this part of the code, uh, you know, be managed by Clang, the language server. So, yeah, I mean, before, yeah, with my old Neovim setup, this part would be grayed out but I guess something happened and uh, with the new Vim setup it's no longer grayed out when it's not active so yeah strange but uh, I mean I don't complain about it. yeah anyway honestly mm, I guess I haven't coded enough to be able to say if NixOS was easier like I tried to do something in Rust and it was really painful to set up with NixOS, but I mean, I have to, you know, learn how to do the flakes um, because, yeah, I, like we have here a flake for Zilib and it's pretty easy, but if you want to do something more complicated, I feel like you need to learn more. It's like a weird learning curve, honestly, but yeah. Um, I guess this skips, but let's let's do it like this. No, let's actually, yeah, let's have skip white spaces. Then we ex expect like slash name. Uh, then we skip again white spaces right and then we expect direct object and then we just repeat i guess until we find two closing thingies so let's do a while again it's funny we do a while one loop pretty confident with this while two loops not gonna lie there are too many like having three of them already in the code base it's insane but uh, it is what it is it's like if you well i guess another way of doing it is while the s string slice empty of slice um, is equal to zero right so while the string slice is not empty we can do this stuff so yeah i mean it's probably it's better Okay, then we expect a name, we expect direct object, and in case, so it's the same thing like here. Uh, and here it's also a good idea to... have something like that. Well, I mean... 
This is a good idea though. Because it's easier to just report the error. So expected a name or closing, but found end of file. Yeah, I, I guess this construction here, it's like having the while it's not empty. And if we encounter the empty string, then we just report the error and return one. So even though it looks bad, like while true, it's uh, just, I feel like it's easier to write it like this. But yeah, anyway, so if we find the end, it's like, yeah, I mean, over is what it is. So we speak, skip the white spaces, right? That makes sense. And after the white spaces, we must have a slash. So let's just copy. I mean, this one is fine. So we are going to do something like If the string starts with a slash, we need to parse the name. Otherwise, expected a name. Well, um, it's a bit weird because actually, here I should probably check first for closing sequence. So if the string slice starts with this top then we want to just break it means that we found a stop right so it's just like end obj hmm. Yeah, we will uh, check that afterwards, but yeah, I think how I want to do it is if I find these characters after trimming white spaces, I want to just break. Otherwise, if we find a slash expected a name. or closing and sure let's crash okay uh, so I guess that works All right something like we remove all of this, we remove the white space. If we find closing, then we stop. And then if we find a slash, we do that. And here we expect a direct object. So yeah. Guess we need object the obj, then parse direct object. We pass in the slice, 
reference to obj and we should just ds uh, dynamic array append Probably also object KV should be defined somewhere. Maybe here. Huh. Like object KV, maybe it's defined in the beginning. Object KV. Let's call it like OBJ key value. And then oh uh, yeah, we can just pass in the object directly. Maybe here we can do something like this. And if parse direct object is not zero, we return defer one. It means it failed somehow. Something like this, I don't know. yeah let's let's try this so i'd say that and then here we need to parse the string so i guess easiest Like somehow at this point, I'd like to be able to take like alphabetic characters out of the slice. But that means I need to access the string itself, right? So str, which kind of sucks. But I don't really see another option. So I'm not sure how I'm going to do that. Like in a you know high level language, you'd probably have a function take while predicate, and you pass in the slice and is alphabetical, and it returns you a string with all the alphabetical characters. But uh, yeah, hmm. I guess easiest. Thing would be to have something like tokenize but it's a take like it feels so weird take while And then here uh, we would need the predicates. Predicate, right? Um, but I need to remember how you define function. So it needs to return integer. 
how did we define arguments? Something like this. Function cannot. Okay, <laughs> I mean, C uh, type the function pointer. So I need like a function pointer, but okay. Damn, this is crazy. Oh my god, it's insane. Um, I mean, it cannot be just me. I feel like this is way too hard to do. I mean, we just need function that takes in... Okay, let's search just for function pointer because always oh, like this. Okay, fair enough. Uh, hopefully, it's like this. Okay. I mean, who said that C is not a high level language, right? This should work. So, how are we gonna do this one? Because tokenize is a bit more tricky. Let's just copy that. So, here for tokenize, what I was doing before was checking if we find the delimiter. And if we find the delimiter, then we stop. But in this case, we stop once the predicate doesn't hold anymore. So let's just try to replace this if statement with predicate. We call it on that. And once it's zero, so it is false, then we stop. That's how I would implement it, right? Like, does it make sense? Like we have the string slice, the predicate, which should be one um, when it's true and zero when it's false. And if the predicate becomes zero, like false, when you call it on a character, then we should stop. Yeah, I think it makes sense. So here we should do something like this string slice take while slice is alpha. Nice. I mean, we could do all num, but let's do alpha. I mean, I didn't see a PDF, like the names contain numbers. It's only so letters. So I guess alpha, it is what it is. Not sigma, just the basic alpha. Okay, so let's do name. Or I guess token. Token seems fair to me. Okay, I had a small brain freeze. String slice. String slice token. Oh, is alpha is int int. Really, though, hmm. 
But why? Anyway, uh, we'll check on that later. So this string slice to owned. And here we need to pass in the token and probably object key value name. And name is just a char star, so I need to do reference. Okay, so is alpha. Mm -hmm. It's strange, I thought is alpha is from C type, but it takes a mint as an argument. That's weird. Hmm. I mean, we can't just define our own function, so um, is a name char char c, and it just does is alpha c and now we have our is name char function which should work all right so um i guess this is how i would do the dictionary um right like, to me it kind of makes sense we could try and test it um but let's see i mean probably it's not gonna work yeah perfect we have some errors expect the name or I'd be curious to see Uh, maybe something here like print f percentage s backslash n object kv name. Let's see if we get any names. Oh shit. That kind of sucks. Okay, I feel like yeah, mixing splits with uh, kind of sucks, but should make it work at some point. Okay, let's see how we can test it more like in a simpler way. So we have this parse dictionary. Mm, yeah, because I'd like to print more stuff just to make sure that everything works fine. So maybe print f percentages like the slice itself. Let's see if we get something here. All right, slice um, str. Well, uh, I mean, didn't really work as expected. So at least we see that it starts with a slash, so that's good. But string slides take a while. So that should be fine. Uh, 
I do something like this and show the i or something like that. Zero. Mm -hmm. Oopsie doopsie. Wait, why is the <laughs> why was it zero? And clearly it was an oopsie doopsie. Ah, it's because I forgot to remove the slash. So let's I really need a function that advances the slice. So like step or something. And I just want to step in that direction, or uh, I don't know. It's a really stupid function, but... Return zero. Thing is... Length should also decrease, am I right? Or am I not right? Like when I do something like tokenize for example yeah I, I remove from the length so that means that if i do slice step i should also decrease the count i mean hopefully uh, this is going to be used just with positive numbers but I mean, I could also just trim left slash and just call it a day. Uh, but maybe step makes more sense. Right, step slice Oops. one. So like, just move one step forward. Right, and now it's pretty cool, we get length. Nice. Uh, but it failed on some other step later on, but uh, it is what it is. So, let's see, let's see. I guess dictionary object is done i don't think we need anything else here like probably some error checks here but i don't really care about it like if it fails it fails with the segmentation fault so it's fine uh, this one same thing it's just out of memory so yeah, I guess parsing the dictionary is fine. The only thing I'm not sure is this kind of... I guess it's like a reference or something. But yeah. I don't know if I want to add that or not. So yeah, that's... 
that's decent. We need to go back to parse direct object. So we removed all the white spaces. Right, and we are now at parse direct object. I mean, it feels a bit weird to remove the white spaces here. So I'd say, okay, we remove the less than symbol. Then we have to remove the white space. We check for this or we check for a name. And then we instantly just go to parse direct object, I'd say. Instantly go into parse direct object. And I guess parse direct object is supposed to uh, trim left white spaces itself. Yeah, I think that's fair. Then we check for this thing again. It is what it is or it isn't there. Okay. And then this thing doesn't really matter yet. So let me just double check indirect object. I, I, yeah, I don't like how it's done right now. I want to do it more like this with um, splitting by white spaces and stuff. But for now it's okay. I'm just thinking how are we gonna recognize this uh, I mean it even so it's because of the R I I would assume Okay, I mean, clearly we need that to so object pointer, or it's like a pointer. Okay, and the object pointer. Kind of has something similar to this. But it's a pointer object, let's call it, and it only has the numbers. So we have pointer object pointer. So let's see if we find something that's not less than less than it means that uh, we have a couple of options it's a boolean a float an integer or a pointer or i guess you know these are the only options uh, like string stream array or name they are just commented out so we removed all the white spaces so it just starts with something Um, let me just rename this one, take while bread, so it's with predicate. And should I make a 
similar function to this one starts with predicate and here it's int predicate char yeah, that, that can make sense So then, but yeah, this is going to be just a single character. So we just have to do predicate star ss arrow str. So we just try the first thingy. But I guess that should be enough. So let's just think here. If this string slice starts with thread, wait. I mean, it's already defined. Starts with thread. Oh, I'm. Uh, Jesus starts with predicate slice yikes is number rc I guess is digit. Which as annoying as it is. Well, I guess we can cast it though. So if we go back here, isn't it possible to cast? I mean, I don't know how to cast it. Yeah, I know. So if this thing starts with a number, let's just do this for debugging on the else case. If this thing starts with a number, um, We have some options. I mean, it would be nice to have a separate function, but for now, let's just think here. So if it starts with a number, we want to take while pred. Uh, is number into a token right so we read into that token next we need to trim all the white spaces again 
because we want to make sure that if we start another number here it's it is a pointer else it's it's not a pointer it was just a number so we don't really care anymore like we don't do any i mean we a string slice to own it right we just do this part but other than that we don't do anything else and obviously here we have to do something like object find is object number wait object int yes, I mean, stupid object int um yeah the only thing that sucks is but let's let's imagine that we don't care about floating point numbers so we ignore floats for now I don't think I saw floats in any of these files, so... Oh, the key also contains weird characters. Okay. But I don't think I saw floats. Oh shit, negative numbers. <laughs> I mean, come on. <laughs> okay, okay. Um, yeah, I, I like, sure, we'll uh, try and figure out all the errors along the way. It's not important to figure them out all at once, so, oops. So let's just have a char pointer, like uh, temporary. Or I guess... Yeah, temporary, whatever. And then object integer is a toy temporary. And then we can create. So, yeah, basically we just ignore floats. Also negative numbers. So yeah, if it, like if our object starts with a digit, right, then we just take, uh, basically we just split our slice into the number and the rest. Then we take all the white spaces, we remove that. If we find another number and uh, not something else, it means that we have a pointer. So two numbers, uh, one right after the other. So it's like six and then comes another zero. Then we have a pointer. But if we don't have that, if we have something else. So for example, imagine we had. I mean, yeah, it sucks. Well, it sucks to suck, to be honest. What can I say? Yeah, it really sucks. Because here we have a list of pointers. Here we have a list of numbers. I could have fuck came up with the idea that this is a good idea. Like, wouldn't it be easier if you had R before? Yeah, whatever the, the PDF inventors, the Adobe Fresh. Okay, so um, mm, yeah, it doesn't work really well like that. Because yeah, sure, it can be in a list. And that sucks. Hmm. 
yeah that that really sucks but i like that the editor shows you i mean see it's like still a pointer even if you have white spaces in between which like that's what makes it really suck Mm, yeah, I mean, I'm just lazy to make it uh, a good solution, you know, so that's why I'm trying to figure out what's the easiest way to do it. Um, I guess making a copy of slice makes sense and just go for it so yeah so if our slice starts with a number then we just take that number then we trim left then we have to check if this thing starts with a number And then we are interested to see that this is annoying as fuck. Right, like, just wanted the solution that's. Uh, pretty but I guess uh, there's no room for that so yeah let's just make it not pretty then I, I don't know yes string slice let's just have like the look ahead slice so we just what I mean temporary slice we just use this one So str is gonna be slice.str and the plan is gonna be slice the plan. Uh, I guess arrows. All right, so we just created a temporary slice that we can use to check if we have pointer or number. Uh, let's just do that. Let's just save our token here. Let's just emp slice uh, take while. Fair enough, let's just say that. Okay, so the idea is pretty much the same. First, we check if it starts with a number, then we know we have either numbers or uh, like pointers. Right. So, we consume all the numbers, then we consume all the spaces. Then if we have another uh, starts with number, then we potentially have a pointer. So again, we have to consume all the All the numbers consume all the white spaces and then if the s string slice starts with mp slice r if it starts with an r jesus <laughs> it's funny that this thing returns one and this thing returns zero that's insane uh, okay so now we have a pointer so slice 
is start of a pointer basically and i guess any other case it was just a number so here just number so let's make a function that checks int is pointer slice right it just checks if we have a pointer so here we return one because it was a pointer here we return zero and let's just say we ignore floats because we do it's the point so yeah if we have if we consume all the numbers all the spaces if we have another number we consume that number and the spaces then if we have an r it was r right yeah if we have an r uh, then it's pointer otherwise it was just a number and then another number for some reason and here it was a number all along okay and uh, yeah I mean it's the it's the else statement so fair enough okay so now i can just say if is pointer we do pointer stuff else we do number stuff which i guess it's this okay jesus fucking christ let's have Uh, something like parse let's just move this stuff ah, actually no let's just take this function and rename it to parse pointer or some stupid shit parse pointer object object and this one is going to be object pointer so we don't have any of that right we don't have to trim anything i guess because we already trimmed so we just have to do basically stuff like this Yeah, I know it's like doing stuff twice, but like it is what it is. So let's re uh, do the slice. Then we need a char pointer temporary. String slice owned. Token temporary. We can create our temporary after we do the A to I. So here it's pointer dot object number. Then we trim all the white spaces. Then again, could also just move all of this. Then we have to do the same thing again. So we take while number into token, we own it, and then it's generation number. Yeah, again, pre temporary. Then we do all of that. The string slice 
Green left. Slice. R. Well, it's just. I guess step. Step would be cleaner, in my opinion. And this thing uh, remove the R. Jesus. So this should actually parse a pointer. And here we just need to pass in the object, okay. And if it's not a pointer, for now let's uh, do the... I'm just curious, let's print F. The slice SDR here. Just want to see. So it's gonna be R. Perfect. That's pretty cool. Okay. Yeah, whatever. Uh so let's do names now because names are uh, the next easiest ones. So let's do. Yeah, and I think is pointer. I'm just gonna move this shit. Like here. Maybe even before. Parse direct object, okay. And this one is gonna be parse name object name, and we saw that it starts with a slash, so we just have to remove the slash and we have to take while is name char and that is gonna be the name well we don't have to fill it oh and uh, yeah, yeah one sec i just want to move this one uh, like this so we have parse dictionary parse name parse uh, pointer object and yeah it's funny it's the same code like here but um, yeah I mean it's the same thing let me just print f here percentage s tmp just to see the tmp I forgot to call it. Oh, yeah, yeah. Parse name object slice object. Nice. Plate decode. Oh, I forgot what these fours and fives are. Hmm. Ah, the object number. Yeah, I don't care about it. I mean, I do care about it. Plate decode. And then it's a 4. So 
So if we take a look, basically it worked, right? Nice. I I guess it worked. Uh, like we can check. Mm. Yeah, I forgot to do. So if it's not zero. Log error, fail to parse dictionary, return before one. Here we can do the same thing. If this thing is not zero, fail to parse name, return diff for one yeah so we should be able to see something like fail to parse dictionary here but we see just flate decode which makes me think that it worked perfect perfect so yeah we were able to do this one i, I mean some of them failed but uh, the reason why they failed is because we don't parse it arrays um we parse most of this stuff so page we parse the pointers so that's good Let's see what else can we do now. So, yeah, when parsing a dictionary, I think everything is good. Name char, I'm probably gonna add support for dots and numbers. So let's do or is digit C or C is equal to dot from what I can see. It's like f1.0 it's like a fucking name it's funny but whatever so yeah it looks like that thing works let's do more testing oh shit well that makes it fail But where is this thing used? So in there, parse name object. Hmm. Oh, it's because I don't print the name anymore. All right. Let's do here like else. The other info. Okay, so at least we know that some dictionary was okay. Okay, so the first three ones are okay. Yeah, and then I don't care. So this one works, then I guess the next one is this one. Wait, what? Strange. Uh, I mean, it's funny, you know why it's, it's working? It's because here it comes, it reads, it reads, then it finds this thing which it doesn't know how to parse. So it skips the next line and on the next line it finds the closing. So yeah, that's why it works. Pretty sure that's what happens. Okay. So, I mean, yeah. But I guess we could probably do something like for 
i int i is equal to zero i is less than object arrow dictionary dot count i plus plus and then we have object kv kv ds dynamic array get and here we need the object dictionary items i think it needs to be a reference the index is going to be i and here we have reference to kv Fuck. Ah. yeah and then we can just print f percentage s new line kv dot name let's see so we should be able to see length filter type blah blah so all of these length filter type wait one second length filter type parent resources contents media box funny then we have proc set proc set and then it didn't know how to edit this one so it's skipped and then we have f3 and f2 right yeah so my theory was correct that it skips the next line okay anyway it's uh, just a game theory anyways so yeah I guess next up is the interesting part, which is the stream. So let's, oops, let's uncomment that. So if this thing starts with stream, I mean, I still keep that just for the moment. So if this thing starts with stream, then we have to parse stream object so this object if it's not zero then we just fail so we just fail but now we need the parse stream object let's just so how will parse stream work um I guess we checked that the uh, string starts with stream, so we just remove stream. I could also, but you know, here's the problem. What if there's gonna be something? Oh, this doesn't work. Okay, then, uh, yeah, splitting by new line makes sense, even though I don't like it splitting by new line might make sense in this case so if we go here we could just follow the same logic like here so let's let's uh, think about it we split by new line Let's just say object uh, 
Complete object stream. Fuck. Hey, I object object stream. Okay. okay. So we set object stream, then we split by new line. So we just remove the line that contains stream. So now our uh, slice starts from here. And how do we go until end stream now? That's going to be interesting. I guess uh, take while. It's uh, but take while doesn't yeah uh, sucks. I mean, advance uh, step one and we check if it starts with end stream. That's the other option. But that's not really correct. Let's think, how can I do that? So, at this point, slice should start on the binary data. Yeah. I mean, I don't want to allocate the string. I just want to... Huh. Yeah, that's uh, I feel it's a bit tricky. Maybe one idea is to count how big the stream is and then create a slice with that. So that could work. So for stream, I don't really like that it's a char pointer because it's better for it to be a string slice though because it's important to have the length so let's do this string slice stream we need the length Uh, because it's gonna contain uh, z bytes with zero, so that's uh... so yeah. I guess one option is to have something like this string slice stream is gonna be point str is gonna be slice dot str. Len is gonna be zero, for example. And I mean, you know, we can even do allocator is equal to slice that allocator or whatever. Um, fuck. Ah. So I think we initialize it like this. And where did we... I'm pretty sure we had this one earlier in TMP slice, but here we didn't even need that. Like I'm like, okay, let's do allocator. Like I just want a copy of. Wait, isn't it the same if I just say slice? I think it is. Wait, let's check. Should be exactly the same thing. Hmm. 
Oh my god. Slide the screen. Let's remove it for a second. Yeah, it's the same thing, right? Yeah, it's the same thing. So we create a copy of our slice. Let's just say stream.plan is equal to zero just for the sake of it. And now while ds starts with and here we can say slice and stream so if starts with is string compare so if it's not zero so if our string slice doesn't start with end stream It means that we can DS string slice a step slice one and stream dot len plus I, I like it more to say plus equal one in this case than plus plus. So if we don't find end stream, we step once. Okay, fair enough. Sounds good to me. And then at the end, we just say object stream. Um, I mean, we could have just said that. Right, so we just set the length like that. Mm. Yes, string slice in it. Don't really like it though. I want to own it myself, so let's do that. Then char pointer buffer is null for example then ds string slice to pound stream and buffer and then ds string slice init a good idea I just think I want to have a separate instance, but I'm not sure if I want a separate instance or not, but anyway, at the end of end stream, we should probably this string slice step string length and string right i like just to go over it but yeah i'm not sure if i want to have a separate instance of the string like own it or if I want a pointer inside of it. Let's just do a pointer inside. I feel like it should still work. Like, uh, it's not that important. 
So we create a copy of this, we set the length to zero, and then we increase the length as we go. So it's the same input string. Hopefully it still works. Okay, then we step over and stream. So here if we do like print F. Okay, let's see if we parse any streams. Interesting. We parse the first one. That's good. It's uh, pretty good. So I guess the next step would be what if we try to uncompress it and print it. Um, so let's make a function like a temporary function show uh, stream or something and it get a string slice for the stream right and we need this part kind of so let's do like this. So the source is gonna be basically stream.str. Source length is gonna be stream.len. I don't really care about this stuff yet it's just uh, temporary then we have the string builder and everything and we just print it so let's do show stream uh, where is the stream here so it's like else but uh, I don't care show stream and here we pass object stream should be interesting let's see yo we actually got it and now we actually parse it uh, like parse every component right and you also get the string um, but yeah for example here we don't get anything same here here we get some gibberish so we just have to figure out how to parse more stuff because yeah right now it's not complete but i guess you no know, we achieved some stuff so we want to parse strings next which i didn't see yet um so it's this or parentheses and also arrays just to complete uh, all of that and then oh yeah also numbers so let's numbers and uh, i guess boolean because if it's not numbers should be boolean or i guess null but i don't know what null is so yeah but i guess it's um you know like uh, more more stuff done so yeah i'm pretty happy with the results so far yeah i like more how the parsing of dictionaries are implemented but i guess even the all the stuff that was doing this with splitting text by space and whatnot it's still fine like uh, could use uh, white space stuff but not that concerned about it like i don't even know if uh, you can have stuff like ah, actually you can 
so maybe yeah, maybe I'll do white space in there too but for now I think it's fine and we get back some text but we still have errors because the parser is not finished yet but you know the important stuff is done so we can extract text from PDF and uh, also the images are gonna be next because right now we just assume where is it we just assume that it's gonna be text but we have to look at this filter key and see if it's flat decode then it's just text and if it's where is it dct decode then it's a jpeg so yeah, that's what we have to check so uh, yeah i guess pretty decent for now and um let's check how we are gonna i mean i don't know maybe i'll try to finish this on my own because probably it's not that interesting and let's try to do next time um you know actually finishing the parser and being able to extract information out of it in a nice format so i mean uh still nice format but you know like a json file or something and then images in files so yeah that's what we are gonna do next time